evening. This is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more X Plane 11. And tonight I've got a special first look episode for you. So, this might look a little bit familiar to you. Yes, folks, this is an airport that I have shown you before. This little scenery package that we're going to be looking at tonight is the first look at I Blue Yonder's free. Heron's Nest Airport. Now, I'm sure you remember a few weeks back, I hopped in the uh, Piper Cub with uh, Alianis's sister, Tanya, and we went flying out of this airport uh, somewhere off the coast of Maine, and we went towards the mainland, stopped by an airport, picked up some supplies, and came back. Well, Mr. Bill Womack has been busy, and I Blue Yonder announced today that the Heron's Nest Airport, or scenery package, I guess is the best way to call it, is now available for X-Plane 11. So yes, we are here, and I have to tell you folks, Bill has outdone himself yet again. This looks even more incredible than I ever thought it would in X-Plane 11. Wow. So, we are going to go flying around this airport, and there's a couple things that I'm going to want to show off. First off, there's this aircraft right here. This is the V-Sky Labs Eurofox. It's pretty cheap, and honestly, it is worth every single penny. As far as your bush plane, or just like a an experimental type plane, the visibility is great, it's easy on the frames, it is just perfect for doing something like this. And it even comes in three variants. There's a tricycle gear, which you're looking at here, there's also a tail dragger, and there's a tail dragger with tundra tires. We won't be using either of the tail draggers because, let's face it, I am much better with tricycle gear than I am with tail draggers. I'm sure you can probably verify that by now if you've been watching my videos. And then the other thing that I want to show off is going to be the seaplane base that Bill has built in to this scenery package. So not only can you park here in the hangar, but you could also go down that little pathway there, and at the bottom of that pathway is a little seaplane base. So I might be using the RC3CB for that. Uh, that'll happen a little bit later on in the video. But for now, Let's see if we can get airborne with this Eurofox here, and I'll show you around the island real quick. We're not going to go all the way to the mainland this time. We're just going to do a couple of circuits around the island just so I can show it off here. All right, without further ado, let's hop into the aircraft. Okay, so we are now in the aircraft, and one of the first things you might have noticed as we were looking at this aircraft outside is it's actually got a female pilot. Now, that is something you don't often see by default on aircraft, but I'm really glad that they did that. The only thing that I need to do, of course, is I need to change her hair color so it's a little bit more red, because you know me. I'm partial to redheads. But for now, she can stay as she is. She's okay. Okay, so... Let's see if we can get this bird started up, and we'll see if we can make it up that little hill. I don't know how much you remember of that previous episode that I did in FSX, but this runway is actually sloped in both directions. So it goes up to a hump, and then it goes down to the little cliff overlooking the water. Bill mimicked everything that he did with FSX on this one. so. This has its own custom mesh associated with it, and yes, you will go uphill and then downhill. It is really freaking cool. Alright, but before we can do all of that, we gotta start the plane, don't we? So, let me see if I can get everything going here. We got our battery on. I'm gonna turn on our avionics as well. There we go. And yes, we do have a GPS, however, we will not be using it since we're basically just doing pattern work today. We'll get our position lights on though, so that's our nav lights. And let's get our ignition switches, both of them on. We'll also get our boost pump, and we'll push the choke in, which is pretty much kind of like our mixture here. Okay, and we're pretty much ready for startup, so we're gonna shout clear prop. Just like that, we are started up. Really cool. Okay, so. While the engine's warming up here, there's a couple things I need to do. First off, let's get our transponder on. We'll already just put it to ALT, or altitude. 
and we're squawking 1200, so that is fine. And my altimeter I need to set. It's a beautiful day out here off the coast of Maine, so we're going to need to set this to 29.92. And let me see if I can do that without zooming us in here. That's a little too much. There we go. Up. Oh, it's so sensitive. I know what you're thinking. That's what she said. Okay. That's pretty close to where we need to be. So I'm good with that. I'm good with that. We'll just have to remember that our ground level is a little bit over sea level, but not too much. All right. I should also have our carb heat on, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, another thing that I need to point out, because this is being done in X-Plane, there are certain features that, of course, come with X-Plane whenever you design an airport, whether using WED or using uh, the methods that Bill has used, which I'm pretty sure he probably used WED as part of the process. What I'm talking about, this is a dirt airstrip. So, since we're inside of a hangar that also has a dirt floor, if I look off to the left here, you can see dust. Is that not the coolest thing? So if you were to bring a helo in here, yes, yeah, same thing will happen. You will kick up dust all over the place. And you can see it's already starting to get a little bit hazy over there because of all this dust flying around. Okay, so let's get out of the hangar before I start choking inside my Oculus Rift here. All right, I am gonna put our flaps down one notch. And in this aircraft, you raise the flap lever to lower the flaps. So let me just confirm, we got one notch down. And we got one notch down. Okay, good to go. So we'll come off the parking brakes here. And we'll give it a lot of throttle to get moving because it is a dirt airstrip. It's a little bit rougher than, say, for example, asphalt or concrete. But yeah, you can already see that slope, right? This is going to get interesting. All right, right there should be good. So yeah, if you've got like a Super Cub or something, that would probably be another really good aircraft to use in this little airstrip here. But I believe our Eurofox is going to perform quite admirably. And one of the reasons why I prefer this over, say, the Super Cub or the regular Piper Cub is the fact that it's got all this great visibility. Look at this. Got visibility up top, even got visibility in the back. It's perfect. The only thing it's missing is like a glass bottom floor, but do we really need that? I think not. All right, let's see if we can take off. So you know what it's time for, folks. Brakes down, throttles up. And full throttle, let's roll. Oh yeah, getting up this hill is going to be a piece of work. <laughs> We're already starting to bounce. <laughs> this mesh is so finely done, too. Alright, but we're at the crest of the hill and we're just over stall speed, so we're going to pull up before we hit the X's. Just like that, we are airborne. So yeah, everything that you're looking at here is pretty much exactly the same as how Bill had it when he created this for FSX and Prepared. I think probably his uh, biggest challenge was making sure that the mesh actually worked and that it wouldn't show any default islands or anything underneath. But I think he did a really spectacular job on that. And he even had the help of Mr. Carl, AKA, Happy Camper, whom you've probably also seen on YouTube. So yeah, this was all good stuff. All right, let us make a left hand pattern here. I'm probably gonna need to trim us down a bit. All right, let me bring our power back a bit here. Okay, so that is the island that you get. And the premise, of course, behind this is imagine having your own private island with your own private bush strip and seaplane base. You know, just in case you happen to have those things. You want to get away from the world, this is the perfect place to do it. So off in that direction, you've got uh, mainland Maine. That's Maine, United, United States. And let me just trim us down here while I'm thinking about it. 
There we go. That way we'll bring up some airspeed. All the trees are custom made. This is not default trees. The only downside is currently in X-Plane, since we do not have seasons, the trees will not change the way that they would in FSX and Prepared. However, hopefully Laminar will be able to address that whole tree issue at some point in time. And we'll actually get honest to goodness seasons. If not, I'm pretty sure that X Enviro's working on something, so don't be too surprised if you see that coming in the near future. Now a couple of the things that are different from the FSX and P3D version. You may have noticed in the FSX video that I did, there were little birds flying around as well as little dolphin pod uh, swimming around in the waters around the islands. Those are missing. Remember, this is Bill's first foray, foray into uh, X-Plane 11. So there's still a lot of stuff that is kind of new to him. But as a proof in concept, this thing works. And I can tell you for a fact that Bill is already working on converting some of his other airports into X-Plane 11. So you will see that relatively soon. As soon as he's done with it, it'll be out there. Yeah, you can see the mesh just fits perfectly. His terrain textures are awesome. He's even got a little bit of uh, surf crashing against the waves there. It's all like orthophoto here, and it all looks really, really fabulous. I thought he did an incredible job on this thing. Now, bear in mind, I'm also seeing this inside the Oculus Rift, so my experience is definitely a bit more lifelike here. And this just works. This just works. All right, I'm going to pull our throttle back here. We're not going to land just yet, but I do want to lose enough airspeed so that I can swing around and check out these trees here. You can see the seaplane base down there. We're going to be taking a closer look at that in a moment. The buoys with the lights on top, those are custom buoys. They're the same buoys that he's got in the FSX and P3D version, and they look so much better with these lights on there. I don't even recall seeing lights on them in FSX. I'm sure they have it, I just never noticed them because they're not as vibrant as they are here in X-Plane. But suffice to say, they translated well. I think there's even some boats out there. There's a little bit of AI traffic. Hopefully they won't come to visit me on my island here, because this is private property, you know. Alright, let us do somewhat of a touch and go here. Because you really have to kind of practice this landing. This is not a very easy airstrip to land at, so you got to be really careful. I'm going to drop our power here. I'm going to attempt to do this without flaps also. But pretty much I've got to bring our power down to about 60 or so knots. And as far as the end of the runway, because we've got trees on either side, it's rather difficult to see. But if you see that little uh, rock point, that is what we're aiming for. The, our three X's should be just to the right of that little rock point. All right, so we're going to see if we can pull this off here. My head might be moving a lot because I've got to scan outside and scan the gauges, make sure we're not going to stall, you know, that sort of thing. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Accent on to communicate because I'm also trying to do a YouTube video here. Alright, speed's coming down nicely. We're at about 200 feet above sea level. There's the point that we're looking for, and there are our three X's, so we'll start swinging over to the left. Speed is still a little high. There's our three X's. All we need to do is get over that, and then we've got to do a pretty hefty flare. So we'll drop power. A little bit of rudder action. Flare. And there we go. We are down, but we're not done. We're going to do one more circuit. I love the little smoke coming out of the chimney there. All right, and we're airborne. Over the X's, good to go. Good to go. So yeah, let's swing around the other way here. 
Now these other islands that you're seeing here, uh, right now, since I do not have Ortho for XP going, uh, this is all default stuff. So compare the two. You've got default laminar research islands with their default trees, which you'll notice my trees generally tend to be a little bit shorter than most. That's because I'm running another mod called Realist Trees, the description to which is going to be in the um, video description, or the link to it is going to be in the video description. And if you compare that with Bill's airports, Bill's trees are a little bit taller, but still just as accurate looking. In fact, they look a damn sight better than what we're seeing right here. But with that having been said, the default island seems to mesh rather well with what Bill has done. It doesn't look like it's too out of place, if you know what I mean. Even though Bill's clearly has a more finely tuned texture on it. And I really love those trees, man. <laughs> you know me, how I am with these trees. I love really good trees, and I can't speak highly enough of this. Alright, but... I don't want to take up the entire video by just flying around the island here, so we'll bring it back around for final. We'll come in, we'll take a brief break, in your case, a few seconds, and then we'll hop into a seaplane and see how well that works. Okay, so I think... Yeah, we are on our crosswind leg right now. We're going to be turning to downwind, but I'm going to use the buoys at the end here as my marker for turnaround. We're at about 500 feet. We should be fine with that. We are gaining an altitude, though, so let me see if I can trim us down a touch. This is one of those easy, no-brainer type planes here. But she does take a gentle hand. You definitely don't want to manhandle this aircraft. Honestly, whenever I'm first looking at anything in the Oculus Rift, whether it be, you know, something for a first look or just me messing around flying, this is the aircraft that I would prefer to use. Unless, of course, I need a helicopter or something like that because of the fact that it's just so easy to use. All right, so there's our point, and we're coming in a little bit too close, so I'm gonna drop our power. Trim for speed here. Actually, I need to drop our power a little bit more, so we'll do that. All right, there we go. Okay, now I can't see the point just yet. Um, did I pull the flaps up? I did not. Our flaps are still down. All right, but that's fine. We should be fine with this. Okay, base leg. It's not going to be an exact pattern. This is kind of difficult to gauge where the runway is because of all the trees in the way. So even on downwind leg, you won't actually see this runway. But there's our point, there's our three X's, so now we can pretty much ride it in. All right. Minus 500 feet per minute. We'll shallow up in a minute, because we're going to be flaring uphill, so to speak. 60 knots. There we go, we'll just coast her in. We're over our X's, and big flare. Woo! Little bouncy, but we made it. Ideally, you probably want to shoot for close to the top of that little hill, and that should be just fine. And remember that this is a dirt runway, so you do need a little bit of extra horsepower, even to make it down the hill. Especially in something like this. Super Cub, you might not have an issue with, but be that as it may, we should be fine. I'm sure I'm kicking up all kinds of dust outside here. Alright, so we'll swing out this way. And we'll just kind of turn around so that I can back plane into its hangar a little bit later on in the day. Alright, right there should be good. 
Okay, so parking brakes on. Flaps can come up. And remember, flap lever goes down in order to put the flaps up. All right, I think we've got just about everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this all off. Okay, there we go. All right, booster off. Ignition off. Okay, all of that off, off, and off. All right. And we still have a little bit of dust disappearing, but other than that, looks fine to me. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. So let's take a little bit of a break here, and then we'll hop into the RC3 CB, and we'll go flying from the seaplane base. We'll do a couple of circuits, and then I'll see if I still remember how to bring this thing down to land. So I'll be right back. Okay, folks, we are back, and this is the D-Den Designs Republic CB, the RC3. And as you can see, we are down at the seaplane docks. So, Mr. Bill put all kinds of textures in here. You can see some signs that, honestly, I did not even notice when I was looking at this in FSX. But sure enough, He's got them here. I'm sure they're there as well. I just never really noticed them before. And of course it helps that I'm, like I said, in the Oculus Rift here. So you can see all kinds of good stuff here. It's got a little rowboat over there. You know, just in case you like uh, run out of engine power and leave your plane way out there, you can, you know, have somebody row out to you and attempt to tow you back in or at least bring you some gas if that's your issue. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And you've seen the uh, buoys before. Like I told you, those are custom-made buoys. The lights, of course, are probably direct from uh, X-Plane, I would imagine. However, they look really good on top of those buoys here. Now, you're probably hearing all kinds of noises, um, seagulls in particular. That is actually something that comes with this Republic CB. This is not a part of Bill's scenery, so I feel like I should probably mention that to you. Whenever you're parked on the water with this aircraft, this is the sound that you hear. If you're on land, you'll hear some other regular bird sounds and probably some bug sounds as well. All right, but let's hop inside. We'll go for a short flight because I'm not as good with seaplanes as I am with land planes, so I'm probably going to make a hash of this landing here. Okay, so we're inside, and i got to say, it's been quite some time since I've been inside this aircraft, so I really do hope that I remember how to start it up. All right, uh, let me see here. I know we got battery... Generator... Actually, you know what? I can get rid of this uh, yoke here. And I can also zoom in. Okay, fuel pump on. Avionics on. Nav lights. Strobe will leave off for now. Beacon will turn on. Okay. Our mixture knob, we're going to want to push that all the way in. Our throttle... Make sure we got good play on that. Our prop pitch is already all the way in, so that is fine. Okay. All right. I think everything should be set for startup. Uh, this is one of those weird planes that once you get it started, you really can't put it all the way to idle, otherwise the engine will cut off. But I'll see if I remember how to do that. So clear prop. Alright, we'll let the engine run for a little bit here, get some fuel going. Okay, so far, so good. So, our plan of action is this. We're just going to go straight out and see if we can take off. I'm not going to use any flaps for this. Um, I, I'm not too good when it comes to using flaps on the water, so I don't want to, like, cause an issue, so to speak. But we'll take off, we'll go back around the island a couple of times, and then we'll come back in and we'll call this episode done for you. Alright, I'm going to put my yoke back on, and I'm also going to forego the uh, transponder because I don't remember how to turn it on, I'll be honest with you, I really don't. Okay, but 
we do have our parking brakes on, and in any float plane, or at least the well-designed ones, uh, the parking brake also equals an anchor. So once we get rid of the parking brake, we'll start moving. Now I'm going to put our pitch down a little bit, so that way we'll pick up some speed. And then we'll bring it to full throttle. Alright, airspeed is coming alive. Okay, we are closing in on stall speed. There we go. Want to get a little bit over that. And we'll pitch up. There we go, just like that, we're airborne. So we'll try and see if we can get a little bit of altitude really quickly here, and then I've got to push the throttle back, because if I keep it at full throttle, this engine may overheat and shut off, and that's gonna make our trip really quick. We'll also swing out to the right. I'm not gonna go too high, because like I said, I don't want us to travel all day here. But I do want to kind of show you the view from inside this little bird. This is such a beauty. And incidentally, quick brownie points with me if you can tell me what movie this aircraft was featured in. I'll give you another look from the outside and you can chime in the comments below. But there's our lovely little airport, or actually vacation island is probably what I should call it. It's obviously not a full-fledged airport per se. But yeah, like I said, Bill thought of just about everything with this thing. The only thing that's missing are the animated critters that are around the area, so our birds and our dolphins. But I have no doubt in my mind that Bill will eventually figure those out and add them in there. And let's not forget, you're getting this for free. Might not look like much, but for those of us who enjoy that low and slow flying and, you know, just tooling around, having a little bit of fun, this is so worth it. So worth it. So yeah, that is Heron's Nest, folks. And let me see if I can bring this aircraft down. This is going to get a little bit interesting here. Like I said, I'm a little bit rusty on my water landings. I know you got to bring it in relatively flat, but the waves, eh, well, they might just do a number on us here. All right, so I'm going to go down this way. This is kind of like our downwind leg, and then I'll point us towards those buoys and see if we can come in. Now, word of note, you'll notice that the buoys are incorrect when you're actually coming in towards the airport. Honestly, there's not much you can do about that. We're talking about physical buoys here. It's not like they can change lights so you have the port on the left and the starboard on the right. So we can definitely forgive Bill for that. Because that's probably the way it would look in real life. Alright, what are we doing on our descent here? We are down to 600 feet. We're losing 500 feet per minute. Engine still in the green. This is fine. As long as I don't lose my engine, then we should be okay. All right, and I think that's far enough, so we'll go ahead and calm down. Like I said, I just wanted to be a quick flight. I didn't really want to take the same amount of time that I did with the Eurofox. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what this is like if you're using a seaplane, since I didn't really get the chance to show that to you when we were doing the FSX episode. 
All right, there's our buoy markers. So yeah, you can see we're coming in with starboard on the left and port on the right, but we should be okay. We are coming in a little bit fast, so I'll have to do an extended flare here. All right, there we go. We're just about lined up. Probably help if we had a little bit of wind blowing, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because if we have wind blowing, then obviously the waves are going to be a little bit higher. And we don't want either. And looks like we're about to stall, but that's okay. Try to keep it as flat as possible. We're probably going to bounce anyway. All right, I'm going to pitch us down here. And we'll keep the engine up. And that way we can just taxi in. Now, you'll notice I didn't go through, like, the full procedure, so our landing lights and all of that good stuff, our strobe lights, none of that was turned on. But consider the fact that we're pretty much out here, there's no one around us. I really, really don't think anybody's going to complain too much. Except, of course, those of you in the comments that want to complain. But, you know what? I'll let you have it. Sometimes, I just don't like to follow the procedures. I just want to get in there and have fun. This little airport will definitely help you achieve that. You can definitely have a lot of fun in this airport. All right, I gotta keep our pitch forward here so that way we're not bouncing too heavily. But we're just gonna ride it all the way in. It's our RPM 2000, yep, that should be fine. We can afford to taxi a little bit faster since we are on the water. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, there we go. A little bit of a rough patch there. All right, now we can come up off the throttle. We can actually just let the engine turn itself off and coast right in. So I'm going to bring us to idle throttle kill our mixture. We might have just enough power to bring her in. All right, so there we go. We are in. Make sure everything is off here, and then we will call this episode done. All right, there we go. Okie dokie, folks. So that is everything that I wanted to show you today. Just to remind you, this is iBlue Yonder's free scenery pack called Heron's Nest. It's the same one that I showed off before in FSX. It's also available for P3D. And now it's available here in X-Plane 11 such an amazing little scenery that, as I said, you get for free. Does it really get any better than free, folks? I think not. So definitely head over to the website that is linked below and download this puppy. Break out your best float plane or your best bush plane or even your helicopter for that matter. Try your luck on that little runway and let me know how you like it. And more importantly, let Bill know how you like it. Because like I said, this is his first scenery for X-Plane 11. So we definitely want to welcome him in and make him feel at home. Alrighty, folks. But that will do it for me. Thank you, as always, for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in X-Plane 11. And I've been taking a first look at Heron's Nest. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. All the links to everything that I use today are in the video description below. And I will catch you on the next one. Ciao!